Are you struggling with loss? Are you willing to challenge everything you've been taught about life and death? Beyond Proof Radio is a space that explores beyond current self-limiting beliefs surrounding loss, offering radical healing, which will come from the least likely of places. Join Angie on her experiential journey, which includes metaphysics, science, and spirituality, proving that the body is merely a shell of our soul. It is possible to create an amazing life from the depths of pain. It's your life. It's your choice. Now, here's your host. Welcome, welcome, my beautiful followers, to a very special show today. We are delving into the astral planes. And I've got my little candle. I've got my notes, my books, everything for you all. Uh, So let's go ahead and get started. Um, What is the astral plane? What is the astral body? And these are things that we're going to get into as we as we go forward. Um, I like what Abraham through Esther Hicks says about astral projection and astral travel. It's the death experience without having to die. Isn't that amazing? So it's not a near death experience. And I'll go in um, in a lot more detail. I do want to share a disclaimer, however, and that is that just as an earth on this earth plane, we also attract positive and negative energy. And so when we're out in the astral plane or in this deep meditative state, it's so important that we use discernment and that we it is kind of the law of attraction in that if you are putting out positive and love and light in the astral planes, just on earth, you are going to experience love and light. And I will explain to you as well, as we delve further into this, how important it is to have someone guide you through the first couple of times Um, just so that they can make sure that you're grounded and and can come back into the, into the earthly realm. I do find it unconscionable that we spend so much time on cars, on our homes, on our jewelry, um, baby clothes, the perfect husband, the perfect house. And yet we do not use that same level of discernment when it comes to working in the inner most crevices of our minds and our bodies, our spirits, and our minds. So it's so important. And uh, Jacob, if you want to show the first uh, slide with uh, Luna and myself, this show is dedicated, you all, to um, Luna Star Van Atta. And I'm going to cry. She was a friend, a spiritual advisor, Reiki master, my Reiki master, an instructor. She was the author of the Amazon bestseller and the Beverly Hills Book Award, The Secret Life of an Astral Traveler. She was the owner and creator of the Astral Temple Method. And she died of COVID-related pneumonia and transitioned into her next life on January 17th, 2021. And I want to take a moment right now and right here, no matter how amazing and the journey that I've been on, it still doesn't take the place of the physicality of our loved ones. And I miss Luna. I miss her physical presence. And I know that she's all around. Um, but this show is is dedicated to her. Uh, I want to read the first part of her book. It's actually the really the first part of her book because it's Roman numeral number 14. Um, but I love what she said uh, in her book, which is she had a couple of really great experiences. And she began telling her parents about these experiences. And she said, I made the inappropriate decision to share that with my parents who immediately retreated into a stance of fear. 
and sent me to a psychiatrist. Unfortunately, our society fears such closeness as God and the world of the angels. It is more acceptable to place many layers of clergy between us and the divine. Our society teaches us at very young age that any out-of-body experience is a sign of nonconformity or even worse, mental illness. We just need to relearn what is possible and embrace that closeness to God. It is our divine right to be one with the creator and within that relationship to embrace all that is offered. I love that. Um, There have been many times where I've heard from people who um, supposedly should have loved me unconditionally that I'd fallen off my rock or that I'd lost my marbles. (laughs) And yet I had to become better than that, better than those labels. Um, As I share with people, coming from a life of 22 plus years in corporate America and then into biotech, I spoke to doctors and now I'm speaking to dead people (laughs) and the dead. And so part of the reason I like this so much is that we spend so much time following other people's journeys and We follow them through this whole lifetime instead of focusing on our own journeys and what gives us the growth and what and what is guaranteed to be different than anyone else. Instead of telling us what to do and reading what to do, experience what to do. And this is what this astral projection, this astral travel did for me. Um. I listen to those, and I'm hoping that you all maybe glean um, a part of the journey is listening to other people's journeys and their experiences. Why did they come to that? And that's what I'm trying to share with you all. Why did I choose to astral project? Not telling you to do it, not telling you not to do it. I'm just sharing the profound experience that I had when I chose to do it. And I feel like just as priests and pastors and theologians on this planet have come to heal, I also believe that the psychics and the medians and the mediums and the sages have also come to this planet to heal. They have gifts from God, yet most of the time we will not listen to those gifts or we will not pay attention or follow those gifts because it doesn't appear in the package that we've been taught that it's supposed to. And it's the same thing with astral projection or astral travel on first sound astral travel. That sounds scary, demonic. It can be satanic. You look it up on Google. If you're coming from a place of fear, you're going to fear anything that presents outside of your box. When we choose to live in love and follow our soul's desire is when we open up our hearts and minds to receive messages, to receive paths, not only to where our loved ones are, but to where we, where we exist in this whole expanded universe. And I have to share with you all, um, the majority of my life, I acted like a teacher not even knowing what I was sharing because it wasn't coming from experience. It was coming from a place of follow the leader. Now that I have this experience, I continue to get the messages of what my purpose is here. And that's what I'm hoping to share with you all. I've got two minutes. And before I go into break, I liken this as to the gifts from God will appear from us, from the divine, from God, from source, from energy, whatever you choose to call that nudge. But here is a man drowning in the sea. Helicopter flies by, drops down his rope and says, let me help you. No, 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 no. Go away. I'm waiting for God. I'm praying to God. God's going to save me. 
So we have all of these life rafts and these and ropes and and all of these vehicles and vessels that can help us through as we navigate this earth earth journey or earth plane. And we don't pay attention to it, but they're gifts. And are we going to jump on or are we going to just stay and say, nope, I'm going to wait for something that looks more in line of what I'm used to. So you guys, we're on our first break. We will dive right into astral travel, astral projection when we come back. Thank you. When was the last time you had that feeling that you knew something, but you couldn't explain how you knew it? How powerful would it be for your life and business if you could consciously tap into that magic within you? What if you could remember that there's something supernatural about you? Tune in to Absolute Alignment with Christelle Biga when success feels easy. Every first and third Friday at 1.30 p.m. Pacific, 4.30 Eastern on TransformationTalkRadio.com. Are you feeling lost or unmotivated, stuck and not sure what to do next? David George Brooke has exactly what you need on That Gratitude Guy podcast. David George Brooke is a speaker, best-selling author, and life coach here to share stories of motivation and inspiration to help you get unstuck and achieve great things by living with gratitude. Live every first and third Friday at 1230 Pacific on TransformationTalkRadio.com. Tune in to the show Heart Change Consciousness. With me, Dr. Trish DeRocher, as stories of inspired activism come to life. Listening to conversations with your favorite authors, change makers, and many more who practice inspired spiritual activism and transform vulnerabilities into sources of strength. Let's be inspired together through my show, Heart Change Consciousness, on TransformationTalkRadio.com. Welcome back, my beautiful followers. We were just going over um, why it's so important um, and so healing when we jump on those life rafts when they're they're available or make themselves known to us. Um, so as I shared with you, Luna's book, The Secret Life of an Astral Traveler, I love this. It's a love story. It's a romance. Um, and she talks about uh, how just stories of her, of what her clients have gone through. Um, it is a great book. If you all get a chance, it is up on Amazon. Another book I want to share with you as well is by Sylvia Brown. And I went over this last month in our discussion on dreams, uh, and the importance and why they're so important. And, 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 if we wish to connect with our loved ones on the other side, she is a godly woman who I wish I would have learned about her before last year. You guys, I judged her 20 years ago. Like I judged everything in my life. Cause I knew everything. My best friend, my closest friend was my mother-in-law. Um, my ex-husband's mom. She was one of the closest friends I'd ever had. She had every book of Sylvia Brown's and I was so eager to show her the right way and the right path while she just quietly read her Sylvia Brown books. And another, I want to cry again because I wish we would have been able to have these conversations uh, when she was alive. Um, what I like about Sylvia Brown is that she comes, she never wavered from her life's passion. And that was helping others to realize there is no death. And so she goes into uh, the astral plane and the astral experience in great detail in her book, The Book of Dreams. So with that, we're going to go ahead and get started with the, the hidden and forgotten um, right uh, hemisphere of our cerebral cortex that we forget. Um, what are our astral bodies? What is the astral plane? Why are astral connections so important? 
truly, I believe they're gifts from God that show us the the other side. So we don't fear when we're here. Anyway, so here we go. First of all, okay, Jacob, do you want to pop up the screen with the left brain? And I want to go over the left brain with you all. I went through this and the, the, the dreams that we did uh, during the February show. I am the left brain, scientist, math, familiar, categorize, accurate, linear, words, language, realistic, rational. I come back to that word. Calculated, equations, numbers, order, logic. And we need our left uh, hemisphere of the cerebral cortex. It's what keeps us organized. We need watches while we live on this earth and we're in this human body. But let's pop over to the right brain. Yearning, sensuality, roaring laughter, taste, sand beneath our feet, movement, vivid colors, paint on empty canvases, boundless imagination, art, poetry, sense, feelings. This is our right cerebral cortex of our, our right hemisphere of our cerebral cortex. Here is where life is playful, but we're so busy in, and we've lost how to have fun. We've lost our creativity. We've lost our imagination and our will for magic. And instead, we go back to that left brain. And we go back to what we've been taught. So although there's structure there, there is also programs. There is what someone deems right and wrong, not what's love and fear. And so it's important that we understand the workings of both. Where do we spend most of our time? And when we sleep eight hours a day, which we're supposed to, and you guys, when you travel in your sleeps, which we do, or your sleep, (laughs) we do, we're able to venture anywhere we want because there is no confinement to this physical body. And so let's go into the uh, next slide. Here we're showing the four different um, cycles of of our wake and sleep. So we've got, um, or sleep, I should say, the beta level. This is where we're awake, we're active, we're alert. Then go down to the alpha level. We're awake, but relaxed. Our eyes are closed. The theta level, we're very sleepy and we're in the process of following asleep and we're usually in the REM stage, rapid eye movement. And then the delta stage, which is deep sleep and non-REM. And it's during the REM stage of our sleep cycle that we dream. And it's immediately following you all the REM that we're able to remember our dreams more. So what is astral travel? It's basically dreaming. It's a, it's basically meditating. It's allowing that left brain to go to sleep, that left side of our brains to, to fall asleep, to go to sleep while our right brains are able to be active and fun and adventurous. And it can be anywhere. One thing I want to share with you, and Jacob, if we can go to the slide, this I liken to an astronaut. Um, Do you see his cord that is attached to the ship? That's so he doesn't go floating off into the stratosphere like, like Valerie June. Thank you, Valerie June, for your song. Dancing on the astral plane, cleansing water, pouring rain. You don't want to be out there. And that's why I, I, I strongly suggest if you're even looking at delving into this, then make sure you're with somebody who knows how to bring you back. We have what's called a silver cord. And let's see, let's go on to the next slide. This is the only one that I could find. But if you see, and Luna mentions in her book, 
And during our show that we did um, regarding the silver cord, um, all over the, the world, different religions, different practices will talk about this cord. It connects us so that when we do astral travel or we do visit different galaxies or loved ones on the other side, that we're always brought back in to our physical back to the earth plane. And I've had a couple of experiences, um, very interesting in deep meditative or in deep sleep. And basically, I've learned to be intentional. Um, I don't just let my dreams happen to me. I don't let astral travel just happen to me. I go in with an intention. And this really changed the way in which I uh, started dreaming, the way I started problem solving. It's intention that is so important. But this cord that we're talking about here, have you all ever felt when you fell asleep that you were just starting to nod off and... (gasps) you just woke up. I've heard, I've read, not quite sure, but I'm kind of leaning towards this uh, thought process. And that is when we nod off and we wake up, it's snapping us back into this earth plane that we're ready to venture out into the stratosphere. We are ready to venture out into these other unworldly realms. And so that uh, cord connects us. Now, women, it says it connects from their crown chakra or their their uh, at the top of their head for men from the stomach. Not really sure. Haven't delved too much into that silver cord, but Luna talks about it in depth. In fact, if you're interested, um, Luna and I conducted a show back on October 18th, actually October 10th of 2018, and it was a show regarding the Astral Temple Method. Um, Now, I overtook her conversation because I was so dang excited about my own um, my own astral travel visit that she helped me uh, to work with. And so. But during this episode, uh, we Luna talks about the method, and then I share with you, which I will share with you on our next segment, of what that uh, experience ac- actually looked like. So if you're interested, go to Beyond Proof, um, just B-E-Y-O-N-D, Beyond Proof, P-R-O-O-F dot com. So one word, Beyond Proof dot com. And you can scroll over to radio uh, to um, I think it's is it radio? Oh, you guys! I think it's I think it's uh, radio. Yeah. And you can scroll on the very right side. Listen on listen online. You can go over to the archives and you can scroll down to that October tenth, two thousand eighteen discussion that I had um, a lot. A, a lot about the experience that I had, what I experienced, what Luna shared, how she gets us into that, how she brings us out. Um, you guys, I have about three minutes left until break. And as we're talking about this, uh, this silver cord that connects us, Sylvia Brown, also from her book, Book of Dreams, on page 120. Let me see if I can find it. Um, and, and this was really interesting. Actually, this was not, uh, the silver cord, you guys, this is what I want. Uh, uh, let me see. Hang on. Yes. Mm, that's not where I want to go. I want to go first to, uh, back to the brain, kind of the, the right and left hemisphere as we are delving into this and Sylvia Brown does a great job. I should have mentioned this before and I'm sorry, I got off track guys. But between my need for logic and my soul deep commitment to those things in life that I knew to be the truth, I'm compelled to share my explanations and the explanations of countless others before me and leave it to you to decide where your common sense, left brain, and God's involvement, right brain, soul brain, in our lives finally take you. And so... What she says about astral travel, and she said, and let's face it, 
astral visits our loved ones pay to us are thrilling and nourishing and comforting and a true gift from God. But visits we pay are every bit as thrilling and a gift from God, if for no other reason that they prove it's not just everyone else's spirit that transcends the mortal body, but it's our spirits too. And that's what I love about this whole experience. Yes, it it led me to my son and my husband, but it also showed me this beautiful space that I know what the next, just a glimpse of what that next life is going to look like on the other side. Um, We are ready to head on break. When we come back, I will share my own personal journey on the astral plane and what I was able to create and then what I had an artist help me create as well. Thank you all for joining me. I hope you're having fun. The truth is funny. Shift happens with monthly guest host Karen Benton. Tune in for powerful conversations about health and wellness. Karen brings unique insights rich with humor and science to her discussions with experts in medicine, movement, psychology, spirituality, and so much more. Don't miss Karen on The Truth is Funny every third Wednesday at 8 a.m. Pacific on TransformationTalkRadio.com. For more information about Karen, visit KarenBetton.com. Learn how to R-I-S-E in business by being confident on video. Confidence coach Susan Axelrod and online business producer Pam Sullivan have teamed up bringing you a new podcast, Webcam Confidence for Women. Tune in live every first and third Friday at noon Pacific, 3 p.m. Eastern, and stay for an open virtual presenter studio session. Offering attendees confidence on webcam, a must-have skill for every woman in business. For more information, visit volutionvirtual.com slash studio. We remember a time when you could simply form a thought and it would manifest. The harmony was forgotten, but it is returning now. The power of inspiration and awakening radio with Julia Griffin on TransformationTalkRadio.com each second and fourth Wednesday at 9 a.m. Pacific. We'll take you on adventures through the heart and spirit exploring who we once were. This intuitive healer studied under the guidance of wolves, learning from their wisdom to master a higher frequency for a new state of mind. Visit OneTrueSelf.com. Hi, everyone. I'm the host of Nothing But Now, Mindful Living with Dr. Mary Angela McGuire on Transformation Talk Radio. I share ideas, insights, and tools you can use to release yourself from fearful and negative thinking and live from a place of clarity and confidence. Please join me in each show where we challenge ourselves to change together. Please go to my website, mcguirelifecoach.com. That's mcguirelifecoach.com. See you next time. Juggling life's relentless demands can leave us unbalanced and restless. Do you feel stuck in the overwhelm? Diane McClay is a personal empowerment coach, author, and compassionate storyteller on a mission to boost you into balance and help you move forward with passion and purpose. Get unstuck with Diane on The Diane McClay Show every second and fourth Friday at 1.30 p.m. Pacific on TransformationTalkRadio.com. For more information about Diane, visit DianeMcClay.com. Welcome back, my beautiful followers. I want to revisit a slide. So Jacob, if you can pop up the slide with the with the cord, I wanted to go over this silver cord with you all. Um, I found what Luna um, had shared and I and I love this and I just I don't want to go without uh, 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 go without not mentioning this. Um, But she says that the body is attached to the silver cord cord so we don't go outside we don't we we will always come back she calls it like a seat belt so when we're astral traveling we are basically it's like an out of body experience technically it's when our essence or our our physical bodies are sleeping and our spiritual bodies are allowed to leave And she was sharing, if you looked, and she said she had several pictures from ancient China to Native American to Egyptian. She said, consciousness always 
connects when we're alive, but disconnects when we die. So that cord is broken when we die because there doesn't need to be any more uh, physicality. We we are no longer on this earth plane. So there's no reason to have a seatbelt connecting us here. And so one thing that I want to share as well, I was so grateful for to be led to Luna because my initial uh, experience was not to go do an astral travel. Oh my God. Didn't even know what that was. I was writing the book uh, regarding Nick and the publisher basically had said, Angie, I want you to go interview Luna star Van Atta. But what ended up from an interview, and I just kept following that, you guys, you know, my work is about following that blood, the breadcrumb. So follow that breadcrumb. I listened to Tom Bird. It's somebody that I trusted. I went to go visit with Luna. Next thing I know, she's helping me to create this astral temple, which is where I could go and meet with Nick anytime I wanted. Now I have to share with you, I've only met him once. I only needed to meet him once. I've got a purpose and a journey on this earth. I don't have to be going floating out into the astral planes all the time. And in fact, I think it's amazing to visit, but not to stay there because we all will learn important work. And I'll go through that towards the end of the show, why it's important to maybe if you have lost someone and you've lost your way and you've lost your purpose is maybe do an astral projection, visit with your loved one. They give you signs of what that next journey may look like. So uh, let's see, where were we going to go? And and let me reiterate as well. When I worked with Luna, she came from a place of very high frequency and very high vibration, meaning that I was not going to attach myself or connect myself to any dark energies out there because I was coming from one, somebody who was trained in this. And who is, like I said, the creator and has the, had the trademark for the astral temple uh, method. But I also came from a place of belief and I came from a place of faith and I came from a place of love that there was no way that I was going to attract any negative energies out there in the astral planes. And I have never had an experience of attracting negativity. So if you all decide you want to do this first, go find a somebody who can, who specializes in astral travel and astral projection, make their, make sure they've done a lot and that they can make sure that they bring you back. And then second of all, you want to make sure that you've got an intention. What do you want to do out there? Do you want to ask a loved one a question? Do you want to visit someone that you haven't seen? Um, It's a very intimate journey and out of body and intentional out of body experience. And so let me go into now my own experience of creating my astral temple, if you will. And if you want, okay, let's not go to slide 11 quite yet, Jacob. Hang on one second. So if you look behind me, this is my astral. And I'm going to get up, you guys. This is my astral temple that I had created. And I'll share with you how it went from, um, from an imagination or from a, a, um, from a meditation to actually manifesting and me wanting to create this magical place and and have a physical, um, a visual of that magical place. So let's go, let's not go into a slide quite yet, Jacob, because what I want to share with you all first is when I went into this experience, Luna felt Nick's energy. And she told me exactly what was going to happen. She was going to bring me into a deep relax, relaxation state and meditative state where I was going to, and it guided me. What does the path look like? Are you stepping on it? Can you hear it? Can you hear as you're walking on it? Is it wood? Is it grass? 
It's a guided meditation, suggestions. But you're taking those suggestions. It's creating your own. And so what what you do or what I did, what she had me do is to visualize what did the path look like? What did the sides of the path look like? What did the door look like? Were there steps leading up to the door? How many? What color? Were they wood, bamboo, rock, railroad ties? The address was very important as well. The number so that you could always come back and know you both know. And it just came out. So I'm visualizing all of this. And then what she did was she had me come out of this visualization, you know, open that she had me open the doors and what did it look like inside creating this meeting place is what I call it. She calls it an astral temple method. I call it a meeting place. And so when I came out, she brought me back. I, she sat me down with paper, artist paper. And so Jacob, let's go ahead and show everyone my rendition you guys, my, my drawing suck, <laughs> but that wasn't the intention. I couldn't draw fast enough what I had experienced. I put gold and white, brilliant sunlight, not blinding. There was a waterfall. There was a stone brick bench. There was a pond. There were three tulips. There was the big red door. And then let's go down to the next slide or let's go to slide 12. There is my address. Where did that come from? And now Nick's favorite number, which I learned, and you all have heard in a lot of of my work, is 17 appeared when he, uh, when his friends were sending me last visuals, last Snapchats, last Instagram, and it was Nick Corbett 17. So I knew that that was going to be a number that would be significant the rest of the time until I see him again. So the number 1717, I wrote, the temple had no walls. There were seven steps leading up from a path of dirt mixed with cobblestone. I approached the door on the right is the address. The door was red, no windows, no ceiling, no doorknobs, wooden, huge doors, three times larger than a normal door. And then finally, Jacob, on the next slide, and I'm just giving you guys my, you know, what I had written. So when I went back into the, the next step was once I created this, she had me go back into this, onto the path, up the steps, to the, to the door, opening the door, walking in, and Then you ask after you're done drawing it, after you're done visualizing it, after you're done, you are now intentionally asking. And I intentionally asked for Nick to meet me there. That was my my goal. And he did. And this is what I wrote when I came out. And it was, thank you for meeting me, Nick. A bright light, your smile and eyes blue. He, write, he says to me, this was in this meeting place. He had one, one foot up on this kidney stone bench. And he said, mom, you know, when I told you, I didn't feel like I belong to this world. I didn't. I love you. I used to say I had dad's brain and looked like you. Now I feel I have more of your mind and we can connect even better on this different level. For Zach, please tell him, I'm so sorry. I didn't mean to leave him. And he was wearing long shorts. He didn't have any tattoos. He was bright and shiny. And when I said hello, and he said, and he greeted me with how happy he was. That was my experience, you guys. And it was such a positive experience. And it showed me this other side where we can just roam anywhere we want. My mindset for so many years was stuck in this belief system that 
There were only two places we could go, a possible third, a heaven, hell, or a purgatory. And I'm here to tell you that's in our minds. It's when I love more and I'm compassionate and I'm aware and I'm conscious that I create the beauty of this world all around me. And when I do that, I am greeted with amazing signs. And we're going to go on a quick break, and then I'll share with you what the end result of that astral temple looks like. Uh, so when we come back, you all, thank you for joining me on this journey, um, and, I'll, and I'll be back in a minute. Thank you. Are you feeling the complexity of life? Do you feel that urge to step into something greater? Tune in to Nailed It Radio. Find your simplicity within your complexity with me, life coach, Carrie Nail. Tune in each month on TransformationTalkRadio.com to discover what it means to use your full power to be the best version of yourself. Imagine stepping into the energy of saying yes to yourself and knowing you nailed it. For more information about me, visit CarrieNail.com. What we've been taught and told is not all there is. Life is all about energy, and the energy you feel is real. Tune into the energy paradigm each month on TransformationTalkRadio.com with Dr. Vic. The energy paradigm is an eye-opening, mind-shifting, transformative, and earth-shattering way to live, work, and do business that will enable you to unlock your magic every day. Visit TheEnergyParadigm.com. Tune in to The Truth is Funny with Colette Steffen each Wednesday at 8 a.m. Pacific, 11 a.m. Eastern on TransformationTalkRadio.com. This hit show will have you thinking outside the box and riding the wave of infinite potential. Join Colette on the Higher Self Network, inspiring listeners to shine their brilliance and ensure success while roaring with laughter as they recognize the humor of the giant cosmic joke. Visit The Truth is funny.com. Are you searching? Are you searching? Are you searching? Looking for a sign? For a, sign. a message you need to hear? From the great unknown? From the most mysterious place? That is the most familiar to your soul? In the depths of who you are? The universe puts someone here to talk to. Someone God gave a blessing to. That you may find insight with. The angel lady.net. 1 800 323 1790. 1 800 You've been listening, but are you watching? Tune in to your favorite shows on the Transformation Talk Radio Facebook page. We stream live video podcasts every day, and we love to hear from you. Leave comments and questions for the host to address live, on the air, and get to know the faces behind the voices you love. Just go to Facebook and search for Transformation Talk Radio. Yeah, yippee skippy to that, baby. Inspire. Empower only on TransformationTalkRadio.com. Hi, you guys. Welcome back, my beautiful followers. We're on our last segment. And the last segment, uh, I shared with you the actual journey of creating this um, this this astral projection or this astral visit. And then I knew that I wanted it painted. Uh, it was so beautiful. And my sketches, as you guys saw, <laughs> did it no justice. And even this doesn't do it justice. I mean, uh, Jacob, if you want to show the next slide, I was introduced uh, at, a, at a journey uh, in Mexico. It was in uh, Teotihuacan, Mexico. And it was the very last day. And I saw this art book laying out and this beautiful artist. Now, we didn't really connect. I was at a different level, having just gone through Nick's and and death and and Jan's death within one year. I probably had no business being there because these people had been followers for such a long time. And here I am, a newbie, wanting answers, wanting questions. I mean, I Googled um, spiritual international journey. So I don't know if the journey 
was why I was led there, but I truly believe in my heart of hearts. It was for this one woman and her name is Jen Davies. And she's this brilliant, brilliant artist. And I asked her if she could paint this, uh, my pastoral temple that I created. She is from, or was from Buckinghamshire, England. Uh, this is her dear friend. And I consider him a dear friend as well, Guy. And this the astral temple was actually placed in a um, in a museum or in a, I'm sorry in a gallery in England, and Jen asked me, you know, well, we need to name it something, and and I called it. I will meet you there, and so down uh, to the next slide and show what I did with Jen for her to be able to create this masterpiece was I went and it took me days to find what I was actually trying to visualize or what I visualized and then trying to put it as manifestation of a picture. You know, what did it look like? What did the door look like? So I could give her the most accurate detail of what my journey was. And here it is. Um, Let me read to you all uh, what I called this. I will meet you there. And we all die. None of us get out of this life alive, at least the life I knew. It was only when my oldest son, Nicholas, chose to take his life at the tender age of 20 that I began searching. I was desperately seeking to know the other side. Where is my, th- where is my son? Through my choice to keep an open mind and not close it to any possibility, I found a way I could connect with my beautiful boy. I could meet him halfway. He could meet me halfway. I created a space that was sacred for Nicholas and me to meet anytime we desired. And I'm going to stop here because now I realize, and this again, four years ago, this again, I know now what I know about energy and the spirit and the soul. And there is no beginning. There is no confinement. There is no end that it's everywhere, all around. It's connected. So I didn't need to create this to meet him. We have this amazing communication and amazing amazing relationship now without the use of an astral temple. It is a place where no one else would be allowed to enter and where there is no need for words. Jen Davies presented to me and together we created Nick's astral temple. She took what lived only deep in my soul and created a living, breathing masterpiece with the help of Luna Star Van Atta and her trademark astral temple method. I call it, I will meet you there. Through my healing journey, I wish to share with others that the same opportunity is available to them in hopes of creating a new story as it pertains to earthly loss. Jen captured what resided only in the deepest crevice of my soul to create a beautiful living and breathing masterpiece, offering proof of an ethereal existence. And there you have it. Uh, Let's go to slide 16, if you will, Jacob. And if you guys see, there is the doors, the path with the seven steps, the 1717, the next slide shows the open doors. This is where Nick greeted me. You can see, I don't know if it's on the next slide. I think that's it. At the bottom left corner, you can see where he greeted me and came. And I was sitting on this bench and he put his foot up on my bench, up on that bench. And that's where we had the most, and I left, we had the most profound conversation and I left with answers answered. And we're done with the astral slide. And now I just want to share with you all, let me find, um, why astral projection and astral travel is so uh, significant. And I found this as a great, let's see what my notes, hang on guys. Here it is. I love this. Um, it's by a guy named Vinu Sandal, or I think I'm saying his name, right? Vinu, Vinu Sandal. He uh, wrote this article in Unsolved Mysteries of the Astral Worlds, and it was published in his publication called The Sunday Guardian Live. 
he writes why they're so important, because that is where you will realize the true freedom of your true nature. And by entering the other realms, we discover the secret of our own existence. What happens after death and where we were before birth and how to live in the material world without losing our divine connection. And that's where this experience has been so profound for me. It's just been one of the many journeys. If you all have been following me, listening to the shows, now we're doing more visual shows where I share with you the journey just from my own experience, not asking you to follow me, not asking you to do what I do, not asking you to even listen. If this doesn't resonate, turn me off. But what I can say, this has changed my life, these experiences, because not only have I found that there is no death, but I have found that, yes, I will see them again on the other side. But more importantly, that we have this huge opportunity to travel anywhere we want to go, anytime we want to do it. This confines us. And when this drops off us, and especially when we sleep, I look forward to sleeping now. I look forward to my dreams now. And I'm thankful for Luna. I am thankful for Jen. And I'm thankful for those on the other side, the spirit guides, Jesus Christ energy. God, my other spiritual advisors are all around me, leading me into my life's purpose and my passion. And this is it, letting you guys know there's nothing to fear. And when we don't fear death and we realize it's just another journey, it's another path, we don't fear life. And we make it our soul's passion and our purpose to find out why we've come. And that has been what my journey has taught me through this whole astral projection, this whole astral travel. I hope you enjoyed this as much as I enjoyed putting this together. I appreciate each and every one of you. If you have your own experiences, I'd love to hear about them. Send them to Angie at beyondproof.com. They may get presented uh, to the world, but thank you all for your time and your energy and taking your part of your life to listen to my journey and how it is healed and how it has a potential to heal you as well. In love and light till the next show. Thank you. Thank you for listening to Beyond Proof Radio with Angie, redefining death and loss. Tune in every first Wednesday at 12 p.m. Pacific on TransformationTalkRadio.com as Angie shares through choice, present moment awareness, and a willingness to keep an open mind that anything is possible, even in death. For more information or to listen to past shows, visit BeyondProof.com. That's BeyondProof.com. See you next time. Views expressed on this program are those of the host, guests, and callers, and do not necessarily reflect the views of the station its management, or advertisers. You're listening to Transformation Talk Radio.